fellow tankers, Space Bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks. And today, guys and girls, I present to you my second tank with three marks. Tier 7 American Heavy Tank T29. It took me about 380 games in this tank in order to achieve my three mark status. I wasn't going for it per se. I was stuck on two marks for the longest period of time but finally managed to break through. Let's quickly take a look at the requirements for T29. As you can see, in order to 3 mark it, you need to be above 2.4k combined damage, which is not a really high requirement when you think about it. Now looking at these stats, it looks like it takes people roughly around 1760 battles in order to achieve the 3 mark status. That's awfully a lot of games, it took me about 380 and I wasn't even trying, so I don't know if that number is correct. Now here you can see before my 3 mark game, I was at about 94.22% and I didn't have a good game before that, unfortunately. Here you can see my setup on the tank, I'm running a large caliber gun rammer, enhanced gun laying drive and improved ventilation. Now before the 3 mark game I actually switched 100% octane fuel with repair kit because I was running only one repair kit and I did not have repair skill because I was basically optimizing gun performance. So I switched that with another repair kit in case I get tracked I will be able to repair much quicker. And that was the idea here. So in a three mark game, we find ourselves in a very, very good matchmaking. Actually, I couldn't get a better matchmaking. There is no artillery in play. We are completely top tier. So at this point, I was thinking to myself, I really have to take advantage of this game. It's an excellent map too. If I get in myself in the location C3, I can use my hold down abilities and then this happens. I'm like, why is it that the game freaking trolls me every time? This guy just wants to stop me from going up the hill. And at this point in time, I was thinking to myself, you know what? I think this game is going to be freaking garbage just because of this. I won't be able to get on top of the hill in time. Now I'm going to have to change my strategy on how I do things. I was completely freaking livid with this guy. I was absolutely pissed off. Now, uh, after this happened, I had to gather myself and I was like, you know what, whatever. It is what it is. The game hasn't started yet. I still can do something special here. But at this point, I was actually regretting switching my fuel for the repair kit because on this map, I would be able to get up this hill much quicker with the fuel uh, which I cannot do now without it so I was thinking to myself man everything is going wrong from the beginning uh, I switched you know the wrong consumable this guy is blocking me I won't be able to get on the hill in time and then it's like a million thoughts going through my mind I'm like there's no way this is gonna end up well but fortunately it did end up pretty good so um, I think the main thing here is that the artillery is not in play. If artillery was in play, trust me, I wouldn't be able to get this game. Like you saw in my Tiger run, almost every game I was targeted by RD. So this was nice for a change. And sometimes you got to get a little bit lucky. In order to get the marks that you need, you have to get lucky with matchmaking. You have to get lucky with map selection. You have to be get lucky with uh, the team you're getting you know it's not as simple as just going you know and doing your thing because in many cases you're trying to do your thing um, but it doesn't work and of course my first shot on the tiger results in a bounce so when I saw that happen I was like okay you know what I'm so close now I can't afford to throw this game I mean I switched to APCR rounds at this point in time and I was like I gotta do this now I gotta do this here because I don't know if I'm gonna get another opportunity like this um, you know being at 44.22 percent it happened to me before a few times actually the game before that I was at 44.5 percent and 
already took me out of the game. Yes, it was a city map. It was a Berlin. And on the Berlin map, there was a couple of FV305 players in a platoon and they focused me. And of course, they had to focus me and I died with only 1500 damage, so I dropped. So anyway, I load APC rounds here. I'm like, okay, there's a lot of targets here. Let's start chewing through them. Let's see what we can accomplish here. Now I'm a top tier. I'm not afraid to look over the ridge and start hammering these guys. So that's what I decided to do. And here I'm overexposing a little bit to hit this tiger. But I was hoping that I don't get tracked. And I do get tracked on top of the hill. But I decided not to repair. And at this point I was thinking, should I repair? Should I not repair? Should I waste my repair kit? I already wasted one of my repair kits earlier for a track repair. So I really want to save this one. But it looks like these guys over there were whoever it was was retracking me. So I'm like, you know what? Let's reposition, get a better hold down position. And that way I can be safer, not show my track. And this way I can just, you know, take damage from these guys without them taking damage from me. But here I overexpose again because I had no shots. Luckily I don't get tracked this time. If I got tracked again here in this position it would have been bad. But I'm taking my chances guys. And at this point in time you have to do what's needed. You have to push it sometimes in order to get your damage. Right? So... So far so good. I'm getting some nice damage. I'm getting some assisted damage. I know it's shared, but still it's some assisted damage is better than none. So I'm going to continue working this ridge. And as you can see, the game is progressing very slowly, which is to my advantage because the slower the game goes, the more of my team is disappearing and dying. It's better for me. I can actually benefit from this game because I can get more damage later on. Right? So we take out this tiger. Here we're going to drop again behind the hill i took a shot from this j panther again so i'm only at half of my health at this point in time but again i'm just trying to push it that's all i'm trying to do now interesting situation here so as you can see we, we won the hill easily because the opposing team did not contest it now all of them are sitting sort of in a on a g line there and it's really difficult to take them out from there and I don't want to cross the open field so I decided to come back to our base to defend against these guys that want the other side of the map but I was hoping here that I won't get spotted unfortunately I do get spotted by this panther but at this point I gotta keep going I can't really stop so I try to take a shot on the move that does not come off the panther puts a shell into me but all I'm thinking now is just to get myself into safety behind this rock over here now i see this light tank far away so we're gonna take him out of the game and we're gonna get ourselves into safety here now this rock is fantastic for defending the base so i'm already in a good position here nothing can move me but this minuteman is going to be a problem and specifically because i'm running out of my apcr rounds and Minuteman is hard to penetrate when pulled down, especially the turret on this thing is as hard as T29, so he won't be easy to get rid of. As you can see, both of my APCR shells bounced, so I'm gonna try to line up this shot, maybe aim it a little bit better. There, we managed to penetrate his roof because in the position that he was, I was aiming down at his roof, so I was able to penetrate him. Although, I wasn't able to penetrate him with my APCR rounds. And then I was able to penetrate him with my AP rounds. Figured that out. Anyway, he's in a good position now, so I can't really do anything to him. So I'm focusing this medium tank. He goes dark, but I put a shell into him anyway. I'm going to poke out, look at this Minuteman again to see if I can do anything there. But yeah, when he's like this, there's nothing, absolutely nothing I can do. So even if I try to hit his Capola, there's no way I can pan it from this angle. It would just bounce. So the game is very close as you can see guys. So what I'm going to do instead. I'm not going to worry about that guy down there. Because he can't do nothing. He's stuck in one position. So I can get to him later. In the meantime I wanted to see if there's anyone creeping on my behind. And what do you know. Another minute man is approaching from this side. So I tracked him. I hope my team can take advantage. But they did not. Uh, 
for whatever reason he stopped paying attention to me so I want to make sure I line up the shot here again I was going for tracking shot in case I really really low roll but it was not the case I shouldn't have low rolled over there but you know what I don't know I don't take chances anymore like that so I try to track him at the same time now this minute man gets out from his position and fortunately for me he started driving towards me so we take him out of the game and at this point I was sitting at about almost 3.3k damage with about 633 assisted I'm like maybe this is enough to get me through but then I see this big top coming down and I fire a shell the first one bounces of course why wouldn't it we're gonna try to line up a shot at him again and <laughs> this shot hits his side armor my uh, my gun trolls me a little bit here let's see if we can put one more shell into him yes we put one more shell into him we bring him down in health can we get another shot into him no we cannot but relatively good game we managed to put up put up 3.6 K damage with about 500 over 500 assisted which will bring our total to over 4,000 damage I was hoping at this point that we got what we needed to get the three marks. Did we get our three marks? Come on. Yes, we got our three marks of excellence. And also mastery ace tanker, which I wasn't expecting actually. That was just uh, icing on a cake. We managed to put up 3.9k damage with 1900 block damage and we're sitting at 95.2% currently which is quite excellent I was very excited about that and my capture card decided to go berserk right at the end but luckily I was able to record the game which was fantastic so we finished with 1802 base XP we managed to kill four tanks with 3.9k damage we fired 29 shots we had 21 direct hits with only 14 penetrations so efficiency was not the greatest and to commemorate my three marks of excellence we're gonna take out t29 one more time this time we are on Karelia and this game is probably three or four games after my three marks have been already achieved so with this game we're gonna bring our mark standing to about well over 96 percent anyway so we are in a tier 8 match so we're mid tier in this matchup and t29 does really well in any type of matchup actually to be honest with you guys i prefer playing this tank as a bottom tier because i figure there's a lot more i can do as a bottom tier and I'm a top tier when I'm a top tier in many cases my team dies and there's not much I can do but when you're bottom tier you can use your turret armor you play this tank sort of like a medium-ish kind of a tank well medium-ish what the hell is medium-ish <laughs> it's sort of like a medium tank right use your turret armor to your advantage but in this situation here I decided to go into a regular spot here which is a brawling location but for whatever reason the enemy team decided to neglect this area so what we're gonna do is we're gonna scoot directly to the hill and yeah we got the centurion here it looks like he's not fully upgraded so i decided to take a shot on a move and he puts a shell onto me but i just wanted to make sure i get into this position here and we nicely put a shell into him now here i have a nice hold down position and he's kind of in a crossfire because we have guys on the hill, on top of the hill already. And guys on the right, so he's basically not paying attention to me. And since he's not fully upgraded, I can easily put shells into his turret. Standard shells. So we're gonna work this position until he's out of the game. And once he's out of the game, well, that shot bounces, but he's out of the game now, so we're gonna move forward. And the way I like playing American heavy tanks is wrap around the side of the hill. It's the best strategy when you wrap around the side of the hill and use your gun depression. So 
take a look what I'm doing here. I'm going on the inside of this Liberty because I want to hack the wall as much as possible or the hill as much as possible and expose only my turret. Now here I know I'm engaging tier 8 so I switch to my APCR rounds but I see this ISE-152 so we put an easy shell into him. Standard shell would probably be able to penetrate him no problem. Now here I wanted to uh, actually test whether I can pen the turret of, uh, of this British heavy tank. Unfortunately I can't. So we're gonna have to aim the shot a little bit lower. We're gonna have to go into his bottom plate. I was actually thinking about testing the top plate but then I'm like nah let's just take the bottom plate here. We track him at the same time he's gonna get taken out. Now looking at this IS in the background there but he hides so we're gonna push this T29 in a second but first I have a shot here so we put a shell into his engine deck. The IS pokes out again but I think yes he got taken out so now I I don't care I can use my hit points so I'm moving forward. T29 puts a shell into me but I don't really care at this point in time because I have plenty of hit points to give. And one thing on this map, and you guys have to learn, and uh, I've covered this already in many of my videos. This area at H7, or F8, is the most important. Because it gives you high ground, and you have shots across the entire map from that location. So majority of the enemy team neglected this area, and that's a big, big mistake. Now here, earlier, I saw the shots incoming from C0 around that area there. That's why I didn't push. I was waiting until that someone gets spotted and the one that gets spotted is a Bor 6. So last thing I want to do is take a shell from him. Hopefully he does not have a, a derp gun because if he does, he could take me out in one shell. I don't think he does though. I see this javelin here. I see a shot at him. I'm trying to get a shot into him, but... My gun is going to troll me multiple times, and that's the accuracy of T29. Even though I'm optimizing already for my gun performance. And my crew is pretty decent on this tank, I still cannot hit those shots. Which is not surprising, T29's gun is not the best. But here I don't have any more shots, and luckily, luckily I bounce a shell from the Borsig. Um... I don't really know if he would have been able to kill me here. I I don't think he could have. Uh, he would have left me at a little bit of uh, health. I don't remember what the alpha is on the Borsig. On the top gun. But anyway, he scuffs his shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here. And we're going to try to take him out of the game. I noticed that he fired earlier. So I don't worry about javelin per se. Um, you know, with his puny gun, he cannot do much to me. So we take out the Borsig, now we're gonna move forward to try to take out this Javelin. I'm gonna see if I can have a shot above this rock, but I cannot, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to poke out slightly from the left. So we're gonna scoot out from the left side. And we're gonna wait until he shows up. And once he does, we'll put a shell into him. So when we reload, we back behind the rock and we're gonna wait for our team to engage before we put another shell to him. But he gets taken out. So we're gonna continue moving forward. So it's pretty much cleanup time. I like I mentioned to you guys before, whoever wins the G7 area or the area on the hill there, then pretty much they control the match. And 90% of games Whoever controls that area wins the game. So, we're gonna push for cleanup now. So, uh, the tank destroyer gets taken out. Only T44 left. We're gonna see if we can track him down and put some more damage into him. Again, this is not a spectacular game, guys. It's going to be kind of an average game that you usually should get in a run if you wanna get like a uh, max of excellence. Maybe a little bit above average to be honest i mean you should be targeting at least two and a half k damage in every game at least to increase 
your status and to raise your marks of excellence. So this is slightly above average game, but uh, I decided to show it to you guys because it brought my standing above 96%, I believe. And it's a class 1 game, from what I remember. Yes, it's a class 1 game. We had 3.3k damage, we had 366 assisted damage, and look at that, even 1100 blocked. That would be a Borsig shell, yeah, and we are at 96.23%, which is quite fantastic. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this will be helpful for you in case you're grinding for 3 marks on T29. That's it for today. Until next time, happy tanking, Space Bandit, checking out. <laughs>